The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Victor Taya, your mathematics teacher. Before we enter into the lesson proper, let us correct the assignment of the previous lesson. Correction of assignment. Question number one. The denominator of a fraction is less than the numerator. What type of fraction is it? The denominator is less than the numerator. It means the numerator is more than the denominator. And this tells us that the fraction is an improper fraction by definition. Question number two. Madame Simi slices a pear into five equal parts. She gives two slices to the sum. What fraction is left? One pair slides equally into five slices. She gives two slices to the sum. It therefore means that three slices of the five equal slices are remaining. So these three slices make up three-fifths of the pair. So three-fifths of the pair is left. Question number three. In a choir of 30 choristers, six are below 15 years. 14 are between 15 and 18 years. And 10 are above 18 years. Question. What fraction of choir are below the age of 15? Looking at the question, a choir of 30 choristers. Six are below the age of 15. So the question here is, what fraction of choir are below the age of 15? So, we have six choristers out of the whole set of choristers being 30. So the fraction below 15 is 6 on 30. But 6 on 30 can further be simplified. So it simplifies to give us 1 fifth. So one fifth of the choir are below the age of 15.
In the choir of 30 choristers, this is the same question. Six are below 15 years. 14 are between 15 and 18 years. And 10 are above 18. So now the second question under this question is, what fraction of choir are above 18? Remember, that choir is made up of 30 choristers. So the number above 18 years, we are told that 10 of the choristers are above 18 years. So the question is asked, what fraction of choir are above 18 years? So 10 out of the 30 choristers are, 18, are above 18 years. So the fraction above 18 years is 10 on 30. But that fraction can further be simplified to give us one third. So what are we saying? We are saying that one third of a choir are above 18 years. Now let's have a review of our program. We have been talking on the model numbers and operations in the set of numbers. Under this model, we have numbers and numerals. The set N of natural numbers. The set Z of integers. Time, number patterns, the set Q of rational numbers. This is the topic under which we are treating. Decimal, arithmetic processes. So these are the various topics of the model. We are under the topic, the set cure of rational numbers. Under this topic, we have seen the set of rational numbers, that is the elements of the set of rational numbers. We have done types of fractions. We are now going in this lesson to do equivalent fractions. Then, we are going to have addition and subtraction of fractions. So these are the various lessons of the topic, the set cure of rational numbers. Here we have our lesson plan. Lesson objectives. Prerequisites, real life situation, learning activity, application exercise, assignment. So these are the various items under our lesson plan. So lesson objectives. The learners should be able to identify fractions that are equivalent. Learners should be able to convert fractions to equivalent fraction. 
these are the objectives of our lesson. Prerequisite. Learners can already identify and operate with integers. Learners can already identify numbers on an integral number line. Learners can already identify fractions. Learners can already compare fractions. So, this is what learners can already do, which is going to be helpful for the learner to understand this lesson. Real life situation. We bring you from reality into the lesson because the lesson has a relevance to real life. The lesson we teach has to be applied in real life. So this is our real life situation for the lesson. Two classes of a school, A and B, of equal number of students, are taken out for manual labor. Class A is divided into nine equal groups. And class B is divided into six equal groups. What fraction of the class A and class B give the same number of students. This, uh, this is our real life situation for the lesson. Learning activity. There you can see two buttons sticks. The two sticks are labeled A and B. They are of equal length. So, in our learning activity, we have the two sticks, A and B, of equal length. And they are partitioned equally as shown. What do I mean? Stick A, call it button A. This size is equal to this size, equal to this size. It means that all the partitions here are equal in length. The same two here, all the partitions in this stick B are equal in length. So, study this and answer the question that will follow. Question one. In how many equal length is stick A partition? Two. In how many equal length is stick B partition? Question sub three. How many partitions of A is equal in length to two partitions of B? Sub four, what fraction of A and B are equal in length? 
These are the questions of the learning activity. Let's see how we can handle those questions. Solutions to learning activity. First part of the question asks, into how many equal length is stick A partition? Let us see. You can count button A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Button A is partitioned equally into nine short length. So, nine. Question number two. Into how many equal length is button B partition? That is button B. Let's count the number of equal partition. One, two, three, four, five, six. So B is partitioned equally into six length. Remember? The two buttons are of equal length. Question three. How many partitions of A are equal in length to two partitions of B? How many partitions of A are equal in length to two partitions of B. Let us see. Moving along button A, we move one, two, three. At the line that marks the three partition, if we come down, we'll be at this line on button B. So we can see that three Partitions of A gives two partition of B in length. So three partition of A gives two partition of B in length. Question number four. What fraction of A and B are equal in length? What fractions of A and B are equal in length? Since 3 out of 9 partitions of A is equal in length to 2 out of 6 partitions of B, it means that the fraction 3 on 9 is equal in length to the fraction 2 on 6. Let us still move along to see whether there are other partitions that are equal. We go. One, two, three, four, five, six. At the point marking the sixth partition, bringing it down, we see that it gives one, two, three, four partition of B. So what are we saying? We are saying that six out of nine, that is the fraction six on nine, is equal to the fraction four on six. So they are equivalent fractions. We can equally have the fraction 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If we come down, we see that they are in line. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 9 out of 9 
is equal in length to 6 out of 6. So those are the fractions that we can identify here that are equal in length. Going back to the real life situation, since the two classes A and B are equal in size, we have seen in our exercise of activity, A gives nine equal groups, B gives six equal groups, three groups of A will give the same number of students as two groups of B. So three or nine equals two and six. These type of fractions are called equivalent fractions. Fractions that give the same size. Fraction of the same quantity are called equivalent fraction. <clears throat> what have we learned so far? Let us recall. We have learned that equivalent fractions are fractions with the same size. You can form equivalent fractions. To form an equivalent fraction, you multiply the numerator and the denominator of that fraction by the same number. If I want to find an equivalent fraction to the fraction 2 thirds, I can divide, multiply 2 by 2, denominator 3 by 2, which gives 4 on 6. So the fraction 4 on 6 is equivalent to 2 on 3. We are saying 4 on 6 is the same size as 2 on 3. We can equally form equivalent fractions by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by the same number. For example, if we have the fraction 3, 6 on the 18, we can form an equivalent fraction to 6 on 18 by dividing 6 by 3 and 18 by 3. So 6 divided by 3 over 18 divided by 3 will give us 2 on the 6. So 2 on 6 is an equivalent fraction to 6 on 18, meaning they are of the same size. We use this sign, these three uh, slashes or do, uh, <laughs> three slashes which look like equal signs. Uh -huh. We can use it to represent equivalence. Having learned this concept, let us apply it in this exercise. Application exercise. One, convert four fifth to any two equivalent fractions. We have learned that to convert a fraction to an equivalent one, either you multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, or you divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So let's get two equivalent fractions to four feet. The first one, 
So for phi, give us an equivalent fraction if we multiply the numerator 4 by 2 and the denominator 5 by 2. We are going to have 8 on 10. So 8 on 10 is an equivalent fraction to 4 on 5. The second equivalent, 4 on 5. If we multiply the numerator 4 by 5 and the denominator by the same number 5, we are going to have 20 on 25. So, 20 on 25 is an equivalent fraction to 4 fifth. So, these are two equivalent fractions of 4 fifth. Question number two. Convert 3 quarter to the equivalent fraction with denominator 20. Remember, in this particular question, you have given what the denominator should be. You have not been simply asked to make an equivalent fraction of 3 on 4. That equivalent fraction should be such that the denominator is 20. To have a denominator of 20 from 4, we see that we can only multiply 4 by 5. So what we should do is to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 5 to have an equivalent fraction with denominator 20. So we have 3 quarter equals 3 times 5 over 4 times 5, which gives 15 on 20. Question 3. A teacher scores an examination on 20, 25. Sorry. The school requires that marks be given on 100. How should the teacher do this? A student, Betty, has 15 on 25. What is her new mark on 100? So this is the application of equivalent fraction. The teacher should convert each mark to an equivalent fraction with 100 as denominator. That is what the teacher should do. So, the marks of 15 on 25 will multiply 25 by 4 to have 100. So, 15 by 4. So, 15 times 4 over 25 times 4, which gives us 60 on 4. So, the new mark of that student is 60 on 100. Question 4. A student has 3 fifth in a quiz, which is to be converted to a test on 20. What will be the new mark of the student? We are converting it to 20 on 20. So 3 over 5 in the quiz, converting this fraction to a, an equivalent fraction with denominator 20 will require that we multiply 5 by 4 and 3 by 4. So 3 on 5 equals 3 times 4 on 5 times 4, which gives 12 on 20. So that is the student's mark on 20. So the student has 12 on 20. Assignment. One, 
Convert 3 on 7 to 2 equivalent fractions. 2. Convert 12 on 20 to an equivalent fraction. First, with denominator 5. Second, with denominator 100. Three, an examination is marked on 45 and to be recorded on 60. One, how will you do the conversion? Two, Ransom has 27 on 45. What is his new mark on 60? Question number four. Two classes A and B of 48 students each are divided such that A has eight equal groups and B has six equal groups. What fractions of A and B are equivalent? We have come to the end of our lesson. In our next lesson, we shall be doing addition and subtraction of fraction. Mane tambia ninya ne injo bia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninya ne injo bia yen